Hey everyone, welcome back and happy. What is today? Thursday? Yeah, happy Thursday. All right, guys. Well, today I am flying out um, out of town from Charleston to Salt Lake City. If you guys want to, by all means, take any guesses as to what I would be doing in Salt Lake City. I'm for damn sure not going there for fun. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to guess. I doubt that you'll ever get it. But with that, we are back to talk about Tom Sandoval, Raquel Levis, Rachel Levis, Rocky, whatever you want to call her, but the Vanderpump Rules drama of it all. So before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and let's jump right in. All right, guys, so thank you to Reality Blur, but Tom Sandoval revealed that Rachel Raquel Levis recently made an offer to drop her revenge porn lawsuit against him on his podcast on Wednesday. Now, while also sharing how Raquel pursued him amid his strained relationship with Ariana and confirming he and his ex-girlfriend were selling their $2 million home, the 43-year-old Vanderpump Rules star reacted to Raquel's ongoing comments about him and more. I don't know what her case is like, but it seems to be after money. Her team came to my team and basically offered to drop all the charges against me if I were to blame the way that the affair was found out on NBC Universal. So it was like NBC Universal's fault that my phone fell out of my pocket and put me up to it. It's all about the fucking money. Now, according to Sandoval, Raquel has been painting herself as a victim ever since the two of them were caught having an affair behind Ariana's back in March of 2023. However, he claims that she was the one who came after him. She says, oh, I was manipulated. It's like, no, 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 girl. Stella got her groove back. If ever you strode into your self-confidence and pretty much did whatever. She at this point was trying to hook up with every guy on the show. Now, as Vanderpump Rules fans will recall, Raquel went on a date with Peter Madrigal and also shared a kiss with Tom Schwartz in mid-season 10 before striking up a romance with Tom Sandoval. With me, it was like she even said in the last scene that we filmed together, I saw that you and Ariana were not in a strong relationship, so I went after you. That's what she said, that we were not happy in our relationship. She said that. Now, you're the one that took your clothes off and jumped in the pool. I was going through a midlife crisis. Oh, God. Tom Sandoval is such a fucking victim, too. I'm not saying I don't take accountability. You don't, you fucking victim. But you came on to me first. You pursued me. You guys are both idiots. You did that, and now you want money. And now you claim to be the big, biggest victim in all of this shit. Now, with Raquel's lawsuit against him ongoing, Sandoval is looking ahead to his future with his girlfriend, Victoria Lee Robinson. The house is going on the market. We're selling the house, getting it ready, and Victoria and I are moving in together. But as for Raquel talking about him each week on her podcast, which she recently announced was ending, Sandoval admitted to having major frustrations. It's really annoying, and it's funny that like she came at Victoria saying she's dating Tom, so she must vibrate at a low level. Apparently, Raquel, because she went away to a mental health facility, is she's now a doctor in psychology. She can diagnose people, call them whatever. It's been really frustrating to hear th these things over and over. But according to Sandoval, he believes Raquel is obsessive compulsive over their situation when she should be moving on. I'm sure people have told her. I'm sure the Meadows probably told her, you need to move on. And she's just not. She's talking about stuff, doesn't take really any accountability. She says that I isolated her. Um, it's like, girl, you had your two best friends that knew about this affair when it was going on pretty much soon after it happened. I was very much at her will in a sense because I put myself in the situation. I take accountability, but there were two guilty people doing that. We were both at fault doing that, and we both kept it going, and we both continued to make those bad choices. Um. I mean, basically from what I'm hearing, it, it's still like, even though he's sitting here saying the right thing of like, oh, well, she needs to take accountability. One fucking million percent she needs to take accountability. But are you? Oh, I take accountability. Oh, I was told. I knew what I was doing. But, but, 
I was in a midlife crisis. Shut the fuck up, you fucking moron. Shut up. You sound like an idiot. You sound like an asshole. You weren't manipulated. You weren't in a midlife crisis. Shut up. That felt good, actually. Actually, that felt really fucking good. Only because I'm like, I'm sitting, I'm so sick of, I've known Tom Sandoval for so long, just off and on. And sure, I wasn't in his home and I wasn't doing things with him. But goddamn, if it's not the most professional victim. And I think that even today, I'm about to fly out and I, I just like, my patience, I don't know if I'm just in a bad mood. I could be in a fucking bad mood. But I'm just like, shut up with your victim bullshit mentality. It's like assholes like this that, oh my God, I'm going to go cheat on my girlfriend or my wife. And I'm going to go out here and I'm going to fucking do whatever I want to do. And then what happens? Oh, well, you get busted. Oh, but these people preyed on you in a time where you were so weak. You weren't fucking weak, you moron. Not then. You've been weak your whole life. That's the problem. It didn't all of a sudden happen with a, a fucking midlife crisis, you moron. Can we put more on on a t-shirt? Does somebody want to put it here for the idiots that go on X or Twitter? Go put more on on a t-shirt. You can give me 10%. I mean. Anyways. I'm obviously not in the mood for Tom Sandoval today. Rachel's lawyer did respond to breaking the rules podcast post. Few, few slides to uh, hang tight. This is an outlandish lie. Let's not forget the source of this information is Tom Sandoval, who illegally and secretly recorded Rachel Levis in a sexually compromising situation without her knowledge or consent while cheating on his girlfriend, Ariana Maddox. Once again, Tom Sandoval cannot be trusted, and the reasons are glaring. Okay. First, this is an obvious lie, as no real lawyer would say drop all charges in a civil case. There's there are no such things as charges in a civil case. Now, second, Sandoval allegedly learned this from the same lawyer he fired for tricking him or misleading him into filing a lawsuit against Ariana Maddox. And if he did hear from his now fired lawyer, why would he trust it as being true? Did he change his trickster opinion of his well, lawyer after he fired him for misleading him? This is complete nonsense and even more evidence of Sandoval's inability to tell the truth. Sounds like Sandoval is looking for a lawsuit that he can't remember this time. Levis's attorney, Brian Freeman. Um, well, Sandoval, so I, I'm just trying to gather this information. Sandoval sounds like an asshole. That's nothing new. Um, Raquel looks like a moron. That's nothing new. Sandoval's accusing Raquel of being a master manipulator, which... That's a stretch. And Raquel is accusing Tom Sandoval of just also doing the same thing. Um I'm just here to say that after this video, I think that we're all done talking about Tom Sandoval and Raquel. And I think that you both are morons. M-O-R-O-N-S, morons. But again, what do I do? Guys, pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I have a flight to catch. So um, actually, before I get on the flight, don't forget that we are going live right after this at 12 p.m. Eastern for hot messy topics but really it's more of a salt lake city recap with ashley from taste of reality love you guys